In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I wanted to share my mom's story. It's still something that's very fresh for me and my family, but I thought that it may bring people comfort. It's always nice to hear somebody else's story, although everybody's experience is different. I wanted to share her experience, our experience, some tips I have as being a caretaker for her, along with some tips for the family and if you're the person going through this. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And honestly, there is no choice but being positive. I don't know if you're religious or faithful, it doesn't really matter. As long as you believe in yourself, in your loved one, in your family, and in strength. I don't think you're ever given more than you can handle. Boy, is the mind powerful. You have to believe that you will get through this, and you will. I know it gets annoying. I've had so many people tell me, stay positive, everything's gonna be okay, just be positive, and yes, I just, there's no other option. I have to be positive. I have to be positive for my mom, I have to be positive for myself, I have to be positive for my family. So many people have been affected by breast cancer. So many people have been affected by it personally. Either it's, them themselves or their family member or a friend. The numbers are astounding with all of the advancements that we have now. There are a lot of survivors. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really find comfort in statistics going through the process. I'm still not done with the process. My mom's still not done with the process. We stayed very positive throughout it all and there were times that, well, you know, the doctor said, oh, that won't happen. Like, the possibility is very slim. And, well, it still did happen. There's believed to be 3.1 million survivors of breast cancer in the United States. That's a lot. Go to your checkups, seriously. Don't miss your annual. And if it runs in your family and they tell you you have to go get checked up more than once a year, do it. Because when you catch it early, it makes all the difference. My mom went to her annual strictly. She always went. She was dealing with some inflammatory pain in her body, so she was sent hormone pills. And while they believe that those hormone pills kind of triggered the growth of the cancer, so when she went to go get her mammogram, they found it, and yeah. After that, it came down to the choice, and the choice is yours of what you wanna do after that. Do you just wanna take out the little pieces? Do you wanna get the whole breast removed? Do you wanna do a double mastectomy? It's up to you. Nobody else can make that choice for you. My mom, once she was diagnosed, she knew she didn't wanna deal with this again, so she opted to get a double mastectomy. And along with that, to add to the recovery period, she wanted to use her own tissue for her breast reconstruction. We utilized, I believe, the only doctor in the area that does a flat procedure, that doesn't use any of the muscles, just the fat and the skin to reconstruct the boobs. I know that's not for everybody, not everybody can do that, and I'm not gonna lie, the recovery was hard. It was hard to see her that way, it was hard for her, definitely, but at the end of the day, it was her own tissues that she used. She essentially, in the beginning, was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer, but once we found out that it was in the lymph nodes, it turned into more of a stage two. Right now, she is cancer-free, although she will be starting chemo on Friday. And after doing chemo, she will do radiation. The thing is that she got her breast removed and when they tested the nodes at the hospital, it came out negative and then once they tested it again, it came back that some of them were positive. After that, they removed some more. They kind of scooped them out, which was another surgery, which obviously painful and, but she had to do it. We had to know for sure if there were any more and in fact there were some more and at that point the oncologist and the surgeon agreed that it would be best to do chemo my mom did a pet scan as well and they didn't find anything they of course will do it again after chemo so it's a process 
and I think it was explained perfectly by a nurse once this all started that it will be a roller coaster of emotions and it has been the ups and downs and you know it is what it is and I think it's very important to take advantage of those high points when you feel good when when your loved one or you feel up to doing something to do it if you feel like going to the restaurant if you feel like going out like enjoy your life and don't let it stop you from enjoying your life once you're better of course and healed to just go out there and do it and you know not to get upset at yourself or your loved one for those days that are harder those days that are downers that are a bit more negative but to just take it and strive just it's a part of the process and you have to know that it's not always going to be great there's going to be days where you have doubts there's going to be days that you lose faith and you just have to keep on going forward and believe that you will get through it. My mom also did the mama print. That kind of just tells you what are your chances of getting cancer again? And it tells you the reason why you got cancer. Was it hormone induced or whatever? In her case, it was hormone induced and the chances of her getting again were slim. My mom also did the genetic test to kind of see, you know, more so for us to see what are the chances. And I know those aren't exactly super, super accurate. There's still a lot of things that we're testing and figuring out, and we still don't have all the information. But it still brought some comfort. I obviously, of course, am gonna get checked up sooner. I'm always gonna go to the doctor. I'm always gonna get my mammograms and make sure that I'm thoroughly checked because my mother, you know, she did have breast cancer. So caregiving tips. This isn't for everybody. And I'm gonna say that to start with. I had pretty much just finished college with my bachelor's degree and I had also just finished a certificate that I was doing. And I got a job working for an agency and while I was working there, my mom got diagnosed with cancer. And I didn't know how difficult it would be, but I knew that it would be hard not being with her. It would be hard for her, you know, not always having somebody. To begin with, at that beginning part, I had work and she was going to doctors, figuring out next steps. And it was hard for me to, you know, take off so much time to go to the appointments. And it was disheartening for me I didn't want her to do anything alone. I wanted to be her support person all the time. So I eventually, before things got too bad, I gave in my two weeks and started working for another agency remotely from home. And I don't regret it. I know not everybody can do that. Not everybody can afford to just stop working. I could do it because I'm home. My dad could work. My sister had to go to school. So I felt that I was in the best position. And if there was any point in my life that I could do this, it was now while I'm studying to get my master's. And I can just focus on helping my mom heal and making things easier for my family and for myself. I can't imagine not being with her. I can't imagine not being able to go to the appointments with her. I can't imagine being with her every step of the way. And I know that we would have found a way around it. I know we would have found some other family members to help out, but I know she feels comfortable with me and I feel better being with her throughout it all. Some tips I have, obvious, but stay positive. Build her up, build whoever is going through this. If it's yourself or a loved one or a friend or whatever, a family member, build them up. See the positive in everything. Make jokes. I mean, you know this person. If it's you, you know yourself. If you, if it's your loved one, you know them. I know my mom, I, I know that she needs me to bring out the positive and stuff. Kind of build her up and even though things seem hard, there's, you know, a positive spin to it. Like 
when she had her double mastectomy and she was using her own tissues for her breast reconstruction, I am telling her that she's gonna look great, that wow, she's gonna be a new woman, she's gonna look fabulous, like the tummy will be gone, and after that, like, she's just gonna wanna show it off, bikinis, like, it's gonna be awesome. It doesn't fix everything, of course not. You know, you're still going through this, but it still helps, I believe. A lot of research, it's hard. You look up stuff and there's negative stuff out there. You search up on the computer and you see an overload of information and you're just overwhelmed. You know, you still wanna read up on it and know what you're dealing with. Support from people that have gone through this. This is so important. My mom reached out to other people that have gone through this and friends that we know, it helped her. Um, one of our friends has a support group for women that go through this and my mom finally joined it, so she's on the Facebook group, and it's inspiring to see so many strong women just muscling through and doing their best. I'm glad she did that. I was urging her to do it for a bit, but you can't essentially make somebody do something that they don't wanna do. She eventually did it, and I think it's helped. You know, she talks about it, and she even makes comments, and she's involved. That same friend that started the group wrote a book, Cancer Dancer, and yeah, my mom read it, I read it. It's her healing guide. And she offers some great tips in it. It was written by Patricia San Pedro. So instead of looking up things and you know being overwhelmed, it's an actual woman that documented her whole journey. And she's super positive. She basically lives what she preaches. She preaches love and compassion and positivity and she lives it. My mom actually, she gets really nauseous with pain meds and with the anesthesia. Since there were multiple surgeries, you know, I found that peppermint oil was really, really helpful. I got this on Amazon and it was like $10 for this bottle and usually you'll pay $10 for like a smaller bottle. So I thought it was a pretty good deal. It really helped her. Like I massage it into her temples and around her nose and behind the neck. Behind the neck is a really good one. Yeah, she likes that one. We were recently told when we went to the hospital um, for the chemo information session that Queez Easy was really beneficial. So we got it too. It worked for somebody else, so we'll see if it works for her. I guess also my mom's the type of person that worries a lot. She's very codependent. So I wanted to make her life as easy as possible. Whatever I can do that she didn't have to do or worry about, I tried to do it and of course I'm not perfect so there's still things that I could be better at. We've all had to step up to the plate. My mom is a rock of the family. She holds the fort down. She's our mama bear. She holds everything together. We did not realize that she did so much and we appreciate her so much more. Just some general tips, pretty self-explanatory. Go to your checkups. Do your mammogram, do your gyno, do your annual checkups with your primary doctor, do everything. It's so important and being scared is not an option. Being worried that you find something or that something goes wrong is not an option. You just gotta go through it and just do it. You know, if they find something, they find something, you will get through it. Do your breast exams. I, that's something that I never like to do and it's hard for me to do it. I went to the gynecologist and she was just very adamant and she gave me like a little guide to do it. I told her I felt uncomfortable doing it, I don't like it, and she's like, well, you gotta do it, you have to try, and it gives you kind of a step-by-step -step guide on what you're supposed to do in the shower. I always felt uncomfortable, like even talking about it, even thinking about it, and much less doing it. Also, eat well, eat clean, eat healthy. It's so important. Our food fuels us, and we can't be putting bad things into our bodies. I looked up recipes and I've been cooking and it's so important. And staying active, it's hard because I, my sister and I will be like, oh no, you can't do that. Just worrying that something will happen to her, that she'll get hurt. But you know, you gotta let that person move around and just get back into the routine of life and just, you know, exercise is good for you. Not anything strenuous, of course, but just getting moving again and not making them feel trapped that they can't leave, that they have to stay in one place, you know? And if it's you, like, you have to be able to, you know, you have to put good things into your body. 
as a precaution and also while you're going through this whole process. It's hard, especially when you're recovering, that you can't be moving around too much, but once you can and you feel good, do a little bit. Move around a little bit and just get yourself moving and I promise it'll make you feel so much better. And as a caregiver, it's nice to see that loved one moving around and just being more, I guess, of themselves because you don't want to see anybody you love suffer. Don't go through it alone. Don't go through anything alone. Talk to somebody because it's hard. And I know, mainly talking about myself, that I hold things in and I just never really addressed things. I just kind of let it, you know, I leave it internally, but that's not good. You got to let it all out in whatever form that you see fit. Have a dance party, even if it's just you, just jam out, listen to music, write or something. Just let something out. You have to let it out. You can't just leave it in there, the things that you're going through. You have to find an outlet. It's just healthier that way. You got to find your way of coping and dealing with things in a healthy, positive manner, whether it's meditating, reading, pleasure reading, you know, something enjoyable, um, writing, listening to music, cooking, speak to your family, because once this all started, we actually found out that one of my mom's aunts had it and we had no clue. So, you know, just talk to people and figure it out, you know, because you could still get it and, and it not running your family, but if you know that it runs in your family, you tell the doctor and they'll just put more pressure and emphasis on making sure that you're clean and nothing is wrong. Happy Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It can happen to anybody. We gotta know what's out there. We gotta know the statistics. We gotta know what our options are. We have to be educated and deal with things in an effective and positive manner. So I wish you guys the best. I sending positive vibes to everybody. Yeah, though my mom's process is not over, she did get the cancer removed and right now we're working towards chemo and radiation to as a precaution just to make sure that it's not anywhere else that everything is clean still got a bit more to go but so incredibly thankful i hope this helps and i hope this brings some type of comfort it's sometimes nice to hear somebody else's story and hear some tips and whatnot um yeah thank you guys